after moment after moment and if we picture all moments or snapshots lined up every moment here on earth every moment of earth orbiting the sun and every moment throughout the entire universe we would see every event that has ever happened or will ever happen every location in space and each and every moment in time from the birth of our universe at the big bang some 14 billion years ago to the formation of stars in the milky way galaxy to the creation of earth four and a half billion years ago to the time of the dinosaurs to events happening on earth today like me working in my office thinking about space time like this led einstein to overturn our everyday picture of past present and future to get a feel for this you have to think about the seemingly simple concept of now for me, a list of things that I consider to be happening right now might include the tick of noon on my office clock, my cat just now jumping from the windowsill, things happening far away like a pigeon in Venice taking flight at this very moment, a meteor just now hitting the moon. explosion of a star at the far reaches of the universe these and all other events that I think are happening at the same moment in time but in different regions of our universe make up what I intuitively think of as now you can picture them as lying on a single slice of space-time let's call it a now slice Common sense would say that you and I and everyone else will agree on what's happening or what exists right now, moment after moment after moment. That is, we would all agree on what lies on a given now slice. But Einstein showed that strangely, when you take motion into account, this common sense picture of time goes out the window. You see what I mean? Think of space-time as a loaf of bread. Einstein realized that just as there are different ways to cut a loaf of bread into individual slices, there are different ways to cut space-time into individual now slices. That is, because motion affects the passage of time, someone who's moving will have a different conception of what's happening right now. And so they'll cut the loaf into different now slices. Their slices will be at a different angle. That person who's moving will, will tilt the knife, will be carving out these slices at a different angle. They won't be parallel to my slices of time. To get a feel for the bizarre effect this can have, imagine an alien here in a galaxy 10 billion light years from Earth. And way over there on Earth, the guy at the gas station. Now. If the two are sitting still, not moving in relation to one another, their clocks tick off time at the same rate, and so they share the same now slices, which cut straight across the loaf. But watch what happens if the alien hops on his bike and rides directly away from Earth. Since motion slows the passage of time, their clocks will no longer tick off time at the same rate. And if their clocks no longer agree, their now slices will no longer agree either. The alien's now slice cuts through the loaf differently. It's angled toward the past. Since the alien is biking at a leisurely pace, his slice is angled to the past by only a minuscule amount. But across such a vast distance, that tiny angle results in a huge difference in time. So what the alien would find on his angled now slice, what he considers is happening 
right now on Earth no longer includes our friend at the gas station or even 40 years earlier when our friend was a baby. Amazingly, the alien's now slice has swept back through 200 years of Earth history and now includes events that we consider part of the distant past, like Beethoven finishing the Fifth Symphony. Even at a relatively slow speed, we can have actually tremendous disagreements on our labeling of now, what happens at the same time, uh, if we're spread out far enough uh, in space. And if that's not strange enough, the direction you move makes a difference too. Watch what happens when the alien turns around and bites toward Earth. The alien's new now slice is angled toward the future. And so it includes events that won't happen on Earth for 200 years. Perhaps our friend's great-great-great-granddaughter teleporting from Paris to New York. Once we know that your now can be what I consider the past, or your now can be what I consider the future, and your now is every bit as valid as my now, then we learn that the past must be real. The future must be real. They could be your now. That means past, present, future, all equally real. They all exist. If you believe the laws of physics, there's just as much reality to the future and the past as there is to the present moment. The past is not gone, and the future isn't non-existent. Past, the future, and the present are all existing in exactly the same way. Just as we think of all of space as being out there, we should think of all of time as being out there too. Everything that has ever happened or will happen, it all exists. From Leonardo da Vinci laying the final brushstroke on the Mona Lisa, to the signing of the Declaration of Independence, to your first day at school, to events that from our perspective are yet to happen, like the first humans landing on Mars. With this bold insight, Einstein shattered one of the most basic concepts of how we experience time. The distinction between past, present, and future, he once said, is only an illusion, however persistent.